So we've got a lot of smoke coming from this engine and I'm quite concerned with it. What we need to do is a compression check. We take readings from all six cylinders and compare the values. If any one of those is lower than the others, it's going to cause some problems for us. If it's not too bad, it might just be where the valve seats in the head. But if it is really low, it's going to be a cracked ring or a cracked piston. And that's pretty much end of life for the engine and our profits out the window. To check the compression in the cylinders, George removes the spark plugs and screws in the pressure gauge. That's 145. As Dean turns over the engine, air is forced through the cylinders and into the gauge. That's on 135. If the readings show that the engine's lost too much compression, it'll be worthless. All right. That's 170. <laughs> OK, that's 160. That's 140. Well, that one's on 150. So we've done the test, and the readings are looking really positive. Between 140 and 170 PSI, that's not a bad range. I'm just going to release this nut on this side, ranking. All right, mate. So carnage may happen. We don't want carnage. Oh. I don't like that word, carnage. With the engine and gearbox weighing in at nearly half a tonne, it's imperative they take extra care. Got about a quarter of an inch to go. So why did that spring up like that, then? Because of the weight of the van? Because we've released half a tonne from the body of the car, basically. There's a nice bit of money in that lever. The best way to do it is get the doors off, get the most access, pull them off out of the way, seats out. But it's never as simple as it seems. The Jaguar's put up a bit of a fight. Now, there's corroded bolts all on the underside of the wing, and I can't get to the door hinges. The quickest way I'm going to be able to do it is get the grinder and grind that wing off. 